Hello? OK, cool. Hi, everyone. Hope you guys are having a good start to your week. Thanks for coming. Uh, you guys just saw a little bit of a demo about Envoy Gateway, and now we're here to give you some updates about the project and just give like a little bit of context about what we've been working on and why. So my name is Alice Wasco. I work for Ambassador Labs. I'm a maintainer on Envoy Gateway. I'm Arko Dasgupta. I'm a software engineer at Tetrade, and I'm also a maintainer on the Envoy Gateway project. So really quick, just to kind of set the scene, uh, we're just going to share some recap about what we've been working on, a little bit of info about the future, and some context around why we've kind of been focusing on what we've been focusing on. What the talk is really about is to hopefully kind of pique your interest in Envoy Gateway. If you haven't, you know, kind of tried it out yourself or you've just been following the project from a distance, we're hoping that we can kind of convince you guys to actually give it a try yourselves after this talk. And really what it's about is mostly just getting more people excited about running Envoy Proxy in more environments. Really quick, just some high level things that we went over in a couple of our last releases that I wanted to draw attention to are one, we've added a bunch of extra support to Envoy Gateway for configuring exactly how it watches resources. So now you can limit it to watching certain different namespaces. This is a hotly requested feature specifically for like those multi-tenancy situations or multi-business unit things where you want to make sure that each Envoy proxy or each Envoy Gateway is only allowed to watch resources that are relevant to it. Next, we've added support for TLS termination for TCP routes. That was a really important feature for us. We've also done a ton of work this last release around observability, and access logging is a big part of that. So now you have a bunch of control over exactly what we log, what the format of that is, and you have all sorts of abilities to push that to different sinks and stuff for the logs and metrics. Lastly, uh, we we're really excited to add uh, support for Gateway API 1.0 GA, and we've added our own cell validation to our own custom resources so that way you guys can get earlier apply time validation instead of having to apply your resources, check the logs, check the statuses, and see what went wrong. We're also super excited to announce a refresh of our docs website. We used to be building our docs on Sphinx. We felt like they felt a little bit too dev docsy in progress, and kind of more like developer resources. They got a fresh new coat of paint. We're building them with Hugo now. So the docs have a brand new look, and we're hopefully, uh, I think most people would agree with me when I say that they're a lot nicer to look at now, and we hope that they're way easier to navigate. So if you haven't given our docs a read, we'd love if you check them out. If you did and you encountered friction in the past, we're hoping that it's a much nicer experience now. So apart from just generating and translating XDS, a core responsibility of Envoy Gateway is to manage the Envoy proxy fleet infrastructure. So we've added features that allow users to support different deployment modes. Many of our users wanted to run Envoy gate, many Envoy gateways in a single cluster, each controller isolated from the other to support different tenants or business units. So we've allowed that by allowing users to specify a list of namespaces on namespace selectors, allowing users to limit the watch resources to a few namespaces. When we started this project, based on the gateway API semantics, we decided to map a single gateway resource to a single Envoy proxy fleet. When users started using it, the feedback we got was that users wanted to map multiple gateway resources to a single Envoy proxy fleet to optimize CPU and memory. So we, so we introduced the merge gateways field to achieve exactly this. We also added more fields in the Envoy service and Envoy deployment to expose more use cases. So as Alice mentioned, our focus has been on day two operations, and we've added support to expose control plane and data plane telemetry. Metrics can be pulled from an endpoint, but can also be pushed to an open telemetry collector. Access logging can be configured in various formats and can be pushed to different sinks. We've also pre-built these Grafana dashboards that our users can produce. I'm excited to announce that Envoy Gateway version v06 now supports Gateway version v1.0. In this Gateway API release, it allows implementations to share a conformance report, aka a scorecard, and all core and extended tests for the HTTP and TLS profiles pass for Envoy Gateway. This release also introduces cell-based validation, which is, ba which is baked into the CRD itself and is executed in the Kubernetes API server 
eliminating the need for a validation webhook, an admission controller, and a dedicated gateway system namespace, reducing the operational burden on the end user. We, this release also added support for the HTTP route timeouts, and we implemented and support that now. While we're super excited for the Gateway API project hitting their GA milestone, we also recognize that there's a ton of functionality in Envoy Proxy that it just is not supported by the Gateway API. And realistically, they can't nor should they add support for every single Envoy field because they're aiming to be a general API that's used by a bunch of different projects. So to extend the Gateway API, we've introduced three of our own custom resources that you saw demoed earlier. These resources are meant to kind of collect all that extra configuration, mostly specific to how Envoy Proxy operates, and, op and condense them into these three separate areas based on where we're talking about handling the traffic. The kind of idea with these is that they're designed so that many different people can be working on them at the same time if you have features that you want to see added into Gateway API, or sorry, into Envoy Gateway. And then if Gateway API ends up adding support for certain features we have in these at some point in the future, we will start deprecating them out and then we'll go with whatever Gateway API prescribes for them if there's feature parity there. The first of these resources is called the Client Traffic Policy. So this is a resource meant to consolidate all the configuration about how Envoy Proxy talks with your downstream clients. We've added support for a brand new feature here in this latest release, which is TCP Keep Alives. The thing to note about all of these policy resources is that they have to be in the same namespace as whatever they're targeting. So this one will target gateways only, and you can target the entire gateway to kind of set blanket defaults for everything in that gateway, or if you want, you can target specific listeners by setting a section name so that you can have different configurations for listeners on that gateway. The next resource is called the backend traffic policy. So this is both for configuration all about how Envoy Proxy talks to your backend services, but also for configuration that might be route dependent. Such as you saw earlier, we took our previous resource, which was the back or the rate limiting filter, and we have now folded it into this policy resource. So you can configure rate limiting here just as you could previous versions using that filter. All of that same config now lives here. We've also added support for a bunch of other cool features. Cool. The last of these resources is called the security policy. We wanted to separate this one out from the other policy resources because we know that a major concern for a lot of organizations is locking down access to who has the ability to view and edit certain resources in the cluster. So a really common use case we would see is that people might have access to configure route level things, but they might not have access to more sensitive or security related information. All that sort of stuff is meant to live in this resource. So we've also taken the previous uh, authentication filter and we've now folded that into the security resource as you saw demoed earlier. We also added support for the brand new feature of cores, which is new in this release. So we thought that was just a big table stakes feature we needed to support and we put a lot of priority on that. Something to note specifically about the security policy and the backend traffic policy is that you can also attach them to route resources. So unlike the client traffic policy, which can only attach to gateways, you have the option of setting this default kind of for your whole cluster by attaching it to gateways, or if you just want to attach it to a single route and set the configuration there, you can do that. It has this kind of concept of implied inheritance. So if you set it at the gateway level, you can do defaults. If you set it at the route level, you can set specific route level config, and the route level config will always win in a conflict. Thanks, Alice, for sharing all those features we're building into this project. But as an end user, what happens when you want to unlock a feature in Envoy Proxy that is not available in Envoy Gateway today? Maybe because Envoy Gateway is still playing catch up or we don't think it's a common use case today. To solve this problem, we introduced the an Envoy Patch Policy API, an API that lets you modify the XTS resources generated by Envoy Gateway. The patching operation is based on JSON patch semantics, a widely used spec and familiar to, to many developers. When you see the word patch, you're probably thinking that this, might be, this can be misused. So you disable this API by default only allowing admins to enable it at startup. This API can only target gateways and must live in the same namespace where the gateway is created, limiting the access to a few, such as platform admins. Patches are also very hard to get right, so we've added a status field 
that can provide feedback on the operation of the patch. Has the patch succeeded? Is the, is the XDS resource that the patch is targeting valid or invalid? We even run the validate all helper command, helper method associated with each XDS resource to make sure that the XDS output is seen. This API is also part of our egcuttle translate command, which lets you run, which lets you generate the XDS output offline before even applying this resource in a cluster. TLDR, you can continue to configure on -y config without forking the project. Release uh, v06 adds support for service import as a backend ref, enabling multi-cluster ingress use cases when used alongside an MCS controller like Submariner. A lot of the updates you see on these slides are driven by users who've been running Envoy Gateway for a while, have seen bottlenecks at scale, and have contributed back to improve the runtime performance. One such example is using the same reconcile request signature, which eliminates the thundering herd problem by coalescing all these reconcile requests during periodic syncs. For more information, please visit our website or our GitHub repository. Get involved. Please try out version 6 and give us feedback. This progress we've shown today would not, been ha would not have been possible without the contributions of all these people and Dependabot. So thank you for your hard work. Yeah. Thanks, folks. We got a bunch of questions earlier in the previous talk about Envoy Gateway, but if there are any additional ones, we'd love to answer them for you. Cool, thanks. Oh, yeah, what's, what's your question? Uh, yeah, it definitely is more of a super user feature. That's we have it disabled by default. Uh, like Arco mentioned, main priority for this resource is just giving people who are kind of already know exactly what on what config they want to set the ability to do so. Now we do have the EGCTL CLI tool, so you can totally like kind of help use that tool to write your patches beforehand and figure out if they would work or if they would not work. Um, as far as kind of future thoughts around the evolution of that feature, I'd kind of have to defer to Arca since this is more of his brainchild. So we kind of have two extension points. You can either apply a patch at runtime using this API, or we also provided a way to add gRPC hooks and, and modify XTS resources at runtime using a sidecar or another extension service. Uh, but as you see that you, we can never guarantee that the patch will work because Across versions, the way we translate XDS resources might change. If we upgrade to an Envoy proxy version, that field might go away. So that's something we cannot guarantee. Good question, though. Okay. I'd say in regards to people wondering about what about this versus Istio Ingress, uh, there's a lot of different meshes that have sort of started offering kind of Ingress solutions and stuff. What I would say is that our goal is to work well with meshes in terms of if you want to use the mesh for the mesh and you want to use us for Ingress, I'd say that's the ideal combination. Like We're really focused on solving the Ingress issue. Istio has spent a ton of time focusing on solving the mesh issue. There's a bunch of other solutions for mesh too, like Linkerd. Um, we want to work nicely with all the mesh providers, but that's, I'd, I'd say, the most common thing that I hear about users who start off, kind of they know they want to mesh for security reasons, they're still learning about Kubernetes, or they're kind of scoping out what uh, configuration the Ingress providers have and whether they should go with them. For simple cases, a lot of the times people are well served by the Ingress solutions offered by Istio, but we're kind of 
more focused on being kind of like that expert for the Ingress thing. So we're planning to have more features, better support, first party. Uh, if you want to let us handle the Ingress, that's where we're going to focus on. We want to play nicely with meshes. So it's just really up to you. If you have a simple use case, you might totally be served well by the Istio Ingress. To add on to what Alice said, um, if you see we're optimizing the, the Ingress case, and we've added features like rate limiting you might not see in other controllers. The other thing with respect to Istio is it, it's a control plane just for ingresses. So in a way, we are a control plane that is managing much lesser on-by proxies. So the design decisions we can make are different. We've enabled XTS, um, Delta XTS by default, and which other controllers cannot do because it's hard to keep so much XTS state in memory. So that's why we're trying to optimize for that use cases. And um, yeah. Thanks. I think we're always, oh, sorry, what's that last part? I think right now we don't have super like long-term roadmap. We're mostly just focusing on what are the key adoption blockers? Like what are those core features or behaviors that people need to see change in Envoy Gateway for them to feel really confident and good about running it in production? Uh, as far as kind of inner service to service communication goes, that's definitely not gonna be a focus area of ours. It's definitely an area best left to meshes. And I think most people that I've kind of talked to that have really big clusters or they have really huge use cases, they're best served by having a dedicated ingress and a dedicated mesh. Um, Backend policies as in, gotcha. Um, I'm not sure. I don't think it's currently high priority for us, but we'd definitely be open to it. That's a good question. So we've added enough support in our infrastructure APIs to let you configure, to let you run beside, let's say, an NLB. Um, and so, yeah, we think it, it, it's a great fit for, site, for it to be side to side, where you can use a cloud-based load balancer uh, to kind of spray traffic into um, different layer seven proxies that can add some intelligent routing at the layer seven level, and then load balance to the to the backend pods. Use case they see really commonly in people that use all sorts of different ingresses, regardless of what your solution is, that Envoy Gateway should play nicely with is this idea of having, like Arco mentioned, layered ingresses. So you might have one master ingress that all the traffic floods through, and then it makes really simple, kind of dumb traffic decisions based on where to send that to other uh, gateways, essentially. So that way you don't overload any one thing. The one at the very top just handles very bare bones routing decisions, and then you have different environments for different kind of business cases, different you know tenants, uh, solutions like that, where you, you can kind of offload the complexity into separate gateways. I think we're getting kicked out. No? Oh, are we getting kicked out? No, 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 sorry. Okay. I just have, a, I, this is my day job as well, so I've got a couple of things that I'll add when you all are done. Okay. Are there any other questions? Any more questions? Cool, yeah, as I said, this is my day job, so just to point out the um, NLB in front of uh, Envoy Gateway is uh, is a thing, but you, especially if you're in managed Kubernetes, EKS, there's a, there's a few little configuration items you'll need to set. Uh, I've written that up, I think that went up as a, a blog on the Tetrate website. <coughs> In terms of Istio and Envoy Gateway, um, if you want end-to-end -end TLS, which you probably do, you ac currently actually need to have Istio uh, run a sidecar alongside Envoy Gateway, as if Envoy Gateway was just another workload in the mesh. That is a bit fiddly to configure, but again, I worked that out, and that's documented somewhere on the Tetrate site, I think on our docs page. So this all works, but it's, it's kind of early days with some of these integrations, so uh, 
yeah, I just thought I'd say that because I was the one who spent the time working both of those out and they're, they're published. If that, if that would help anybody. Cool, thanks very much, Arco and Alice.